this is about to be the biggest War Thunder challenge I have ever done. And we're going to be using the British tanks for this because this is the tank platoon challenge. So for the purpose of this challenge, I have a tank platoon. And in this case, it's a four plus one. Now some tank platoons are three tanks, some are five tanks, some are four tanks. But the one that I'm used to is four tanks with an attached support vehicle or command vehicle, which in this case is played by the role of our AA gun right here. For the remaining four tanks, the objective is simple. In order to upgrade, they must get at least one kill before dying. Now, if they get no kills and no assists, because two assists will count as one kill, they lose a life each tank in the platoon has three lives total and when I lose all three they're gone forever. The aim of the game is to get all the way to rank five which I have right here and we're gonna find out exactly how many of them are left standing by the end of this challenge. It's a big one and you're gonna want to see all the way to the end which one of these crews are the last tank standing. Place your bets down in the comments below and let's get to it. It's also worth mentioning that the challenge will end, of course, if all crews are killed completely, but also that this will encourage me to actually play every single crew in the lineup at some point. Now, it may not always be possible to use all of them in a single battle, but unless I want to have a situation where I have one rank four and then the rest are rank ones, so I should probably rotate them often enough. I think the only one that's going to be tricky really is the SPAA, but we'll find out because that's very much a situational thing. Right, there's definitely somebody right there on our C point. And I'll just make sure there's nobody watching this corner right here. These rank one battles can be slightly unpredictable at times. Oh, I just missed him. Come on. There we go. All right, there's that one kill. Oh, we're getting hit from the side. That's what I was trying to avoid. Our reverse speed isn't great. We do have smoke grenades, though, so that's pretty good. Although, weirdly, they're the airburst type, which they wouldn't have had at that time, I don't think. But hey, I could be wrong. Let me know if that's a thing. Oh, okay, somebody's flanking us. I think it's whatever hit me in the side earlier is actually flanking us right now. Just a feeling, but I can hear an engine rumbling away down here. There he is. Ooh, okay, I hit his loader, not his gunner. That's what I was trying to actually hit. There we go. <laughs> Alright, we're slightly overachieving here. You know, each upgrade is one kill each, so could be skipping tanks on this particular crew. Ooh, uh, hello. Hang on. It's that Hungarian thing. Yeah, gotta be careful with these things. They're, um, they're a little bit trolly when it comes to their armor. And their gun's not bad. But if you've seen my previous videos, I did actually struggle with one before. It was slightly embarrassing, but also, yeah, just kind of proof that the armor can be a little bit tricky at times. There's something right there. I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing things. Oh no, I'm seeing things. There's definitely something to my right. I can hear him. Oh. That is a very scary gun to be staring at. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, really? I ricocheted off. I should have probably gone to gun review, but it's fine. All right, I think I definitely want to get the Tetrach uh, upgraded here. It is the littlest one of the bunch, and I'm going to drop artillery on where I think that BD-42 was. It's somewhere around there. I mean, he's probably not still there. Oh, there's a plane. Uh, I should have probably gone with my, um, my AA gun, but oh well. Okay, we do need to capture. We definitely, definitely need to capture. Oh, that's not good. I didn't realize that this tank has a uh, stabilizer. I mean, it's a low speed stabilizer, but you know, it's better than nothing. Oh, hello. Oh no, that's a death. Well, that's a little bit disappointing to lose a life on one of my crews already. But we got our AA gun up, but I feel like this match might be lost. See if I can get this one that's coming towards me here. Oh, he's diving pretty quick. Come on. I did hit him, but something's coming. No. Okay, I can't believe how many we've lost already. All right, but it stops now. <laughs> we've got one kill. So if we die now, we don't lose that life, which is good. It's, it's something. Oh, I didn't get him at all. 
Oh, there's something. There's something. Let's see. Can I hit you there? Oh, he dived at the last second. It's bobbing and weaving. I unfortunately don't have any aircraft. Definitely a, a minor oversight on my part, but at the same time, this is a tank platoon, and they don't tend to have aircraft, at least not within the platoon anyway. All right, up and over. There he is. Oh, it's an LVT. Has he seen me? We'll Alright, so the A13 got three, and the Sark got one. Of course means the A13 gets an upgrade all the way to the Crusader 2. And the Sark gets an upgrade one time, which of course brings it to the Mark 2, well, the two-pounder version of the Mark 6. This is already looking like a bit of a problem because we've got the Stuart here at 1.7 and that badly needs an upgrade. So I might have to play this immediately. But that right there is how the challenge is played. So of course if you do want to attempt the challenge yourself, now you know how to do it. And if you do, of course, end up trying any of the challenges that I do for yourselves, let me know down in the comments. Alright. Time to get this Stuart upgraded, I think. We're already in rank 2 and... Well, the Crusader being the only tank that's upgraded is a little bit of a problem. I would genuinely love to be able to get some easy assists with scouting, but given that this is a rank 1 vehicle, we don't have it. It's very annoying. There's something over there. M3, there's something over there. Yeah, you turn. I don't know how to tell him. <laughs> Well, there's something shooting right here. I wonder, can I hit that with artillery? Oh, I can. I haven't seen any shots from there recently, though, so he might have moved. Oh, I hit something with the artillery. Okay, so whatever was shooting up there is still there. Still no sight on him, though. What are these massive shells that are sitting here in the grass where no one can see them? Was that... Was that shot aimed at me? It's so hard to tell sometimes. I keep sitting, seeing this hit marker appear over here and I don't know. I can see the muzzle flash. I just don't know what's down there and I don't want to go wandering in. I would very much like to get a hit on something. Hello. Let's hit him again. Right, let's hit him more to the left. There we go. Hey, I got a kill. <laughs> I will take it. I got a kill. Is that a pl Oh, there is a plane. Okay, I think my 30 caliber gun can hit him. Hang on. Oh, he's too far away now. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm slightly advertising my location right now. Hmm, probably not a good idea. But that kill on whatever that Swedish tank destroyer was uh, does highlight the issues with the solid shot AP. It's just there isn't enough fragmentation from it, especially against something so lightly armored. And it's not like I have a choice. I literally only have solid shot AP. So everything does take more than one shot, typically. Okay, so there's somebody on that side. Okay, I think it's time for me to go to a different spot. Looks like the uh, the A point's under attack, so we can go for that. Oh wow, there was somebody right up here. Okay. Oh, there's enemy tanks down there. Oh, there's one facing its back to me. Oh, I missed. Wait, I can damage him? Let's do that again. Hey, I got another kill! Solid shot or not? This 37mm is amazing. There's a good reason why it's used so extensively. The uh, the 37mm M1 all the way to the M6 cannon was used on so many tanks uh, at the early stages of World War II. And even before that. That's a little history snippet for you guys. Oh, I saw something. A little muzzle flash down there. Let's go there. Oh, that was close. Very close. Right behind those rocks. Let's see if I can hit that. Let's get the artillery. Artillery might make a move. Whoa! <laughs> that was a big bomber that just appeared. I got him! Ooh, that's three kills! If I get one more kill. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, oh, don't see me. Don't see me. Hit him again. There we go! Okay, that's four kills with the steward. That's two upgrades. Uh-oh. Wait, how did that not kill me? Oh, my what? machine gun's out. Is there another plane coming? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, did he blew himself up. Okay, I don't think I can survive a third airstrike. Honestly, where, where were all of these planes when I was trying to level up my AA, huh? Okay, we are back up and running. Honestly, though, I think if I was to do this again, I'd probably want to switch my uh, AA gun for a plane. I feel like that would end up being a lot more useful. No! Alright, there's kill number five. Very nice. Oh, there's something down there. I hit him. Let's hit him again. Come on. 
There we go. Oh, that's six. I'm really overachieving in the store at this time. Seven. <laughs> what is happening right now? I don't want to call it luck, but um, actually, no, I do want to call it luck because I've survived two airstrikes, one of which killed the plane trying to hit me, and I now got seven tanks. What is this? Oh, possible number eight. He does know where I am. He's going to return fire in a sec. I've hit him. I think I got his gunner, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm setting him on fire. I don't think it's going to kill him, necessarily. Let's drop artillery on him and relocate, because artillery is coming for me now. Oh, enemy tank, enemy tank, enemy tank. Let me get him again. Come on. No, I'm out of ammo. Wait, I might be able to get him with machine guns, though. Okay, I got an assist on him. I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, I severely damaged him with, uh, with my machine guns. So I will take that. Oh, that Swedish thingy is still there. Not there, but there. He's still looking over here. Can I hit him with my machine gun? I think I can. <laughs> I don't think he knows I'm out of ammo. I got a feeling he doesn't know. And I think that's pretty funny. Ooh, two assists. Two assists is a kill. That's eight kills. Eight kills in the Stuart. And now time to run back to our base to see if I can get ammo again. I, I will be frankly amazed if I do this. Is there a plane coming for me? There is a plane coming for me. Wait, what? Oh, there's two planes. Is he coming right over me? I mean, what is an anti-aircraft machine gun for if you don't use it, right? I think I hit him. I don't know. The, the message didn't come up, but sometimes it doesn't come up. Like, especially when you're doing AA stuff, sometimes you'll get hits, but they don't damage anything, and it just doesn't appear. But it still counts them, which is super weird. Although that time, I think maybe I didn't hit him. I'll just duck in here. It's a quick resupply on these. Really, really quick. Then again, if you've ever seen a 37 millimeter shell, you know why it's that quick. Those are tiny, tiny shells. Like, look at them all in there. They're little. All right, I got some people fighting over B right now. Oh, something alive over there? Okay, let's not go charging straight at it. Not that I need more kills or anything, but I, I do want to help the team now. All right, well, there it is. Seven kills, two assists. And that, of course, means the Steward 1 gets to upgrade four times. So it goes from the Steward 3. Valentine one and I don't remember if we're counting folded vehicles or not. Now I think we're not doing folded vehicles because in any case it with the way the current research tree works anything that's folded is optional. So it's going from the Valentine one then to Matilda three and then Churchill one. Okay so that's kind of something. Uh, the Churchill like, I like the Matilda. I would have been happy to stop at the Matilda and continue from there. But uh, the Churchill is really something. Like, we have a 40mm gun in the turret. We have a 76mm howitzer in the hull. And a 7.92 machine gun with over 4,000 rounds of ammo. Like, that's nearly 5,000 rounds. Like, it's almost like they looked at it and went, you know, 5,000 is too many. Just take one box out. One box. You know, half a box out. We'll, we'll, we'll go with 50 less. We don't want to overdo it. So this presents an interesting problem because as much as I want to take the Churchill out immediately, we do have a little bit of a problem because this right here is still reserved tier. <laughs> this is actually painful. But if I want the little Tetrach to actually get the love it deserves, yeah, I'm going to have to take it out. And since we're not counting captures, this is going to be even more difficult because this is already at a... Uh, BR where the gun it has, this, uh, I believe this, yeah, it's a two pounder gun. It starts to struggle a little bit to do any damage at all. And this is also the point where we lack any scouting ability at all, and that becomes an even bigger problem. Oh, I just saw something. Something just snuck by me right there. We gotta play in a really sneaky way, is essentially what we have to do. And I just don't see that really happening. Although we do have smoke grenades, so maybe that'll work. There it comes. Oh, I got it. It's a Puma. And that's a Crusader. I've hit them both. Oh, it's coming here, isn't it? Okay, let's not push out because this is a this is a bad situation for me. I'm, I'm now having to reverse uphill. And they know where I am and there's something down there. There is something down there. Oh, he missed. He is on fire, though. Okay, when I said that there were things that we can't damage, that's not one of them. 
But we are getting into that territory where it starts to get a little bit dicey. I really should be switching to my APT from here, huh? Okay, I'll queue up my APAG for the next round. I can hear something moving around behind me. I can hear a lot of things moving. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's an AA. Oh no, he got me! Well, that's kind of sad because that puts me down one. Oh, hang on. Wait, we got two kills. No, two assists. Oh, that's not enough. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that is actually a little bit of good news because I was about to say our Tetrach crew is down to one life remaining, but they didn't get a no score death. It was three assists. So that's not nothing, but it's not enough for an upgrade. So they live to fight another day, essentially. They are back up to two lives remaining. But yeah, that could very easily have been a no-kill death. Okay, I don't like this territory that we're heading into. I don't like any of this. The Sark is not known for its survivability, I'll put it that way. All right, B point. Can we, can we get a quick little decap on the B point? Quick little decap, quick little decap. Okay, and away. Puma, die, hit him again. Got him, and run away. Never mind. <laughs> Sometimes this game just hates me though. I'll have one good game and then this happens. It's not a complaint, it's just an observation. There was something down there. I'm on fire. Uh oh. Come on. I can't pen him. All these are non pens. No! Well, that is actually a live loss on the Crusader. I don't think there's any other way of looking at it. But maybe we might be able to do something with our AA gun. There are enough uh, planes flying around. All right, get him. I hit him. You know, we're alive. That's what counts. Right. If, if I were to say I'm not particularly confident right now, I mean, would you blame me? Oh, incoming. I can hear him. Yeah, we'll let the 105 go in front. Because there's definitely somebody right around the corner from here. I don't want to be the first one in. Oh, really? I can't break that down? Let me in! There we go. Something's already on the B point. And something's coming to me. Uh-oh. Ooh! That's not good. Uh-oh. Oh. Well, that's uh, one life remaining on the Tetrach, which isn't great. <laughs> A little Tetra seen better days. Although, that being said, I don't think the Sark is particularly far, far behind in that regard. Let's see if we can get some cheeky artillery hits on there. Alright, artillery got a hit. Okay, I think the Chaffee's trying desperately to kill something. And I, d I don't know what. Oh! Hey, I got a kill! Okay, quick. Put out the fire. I'll fire off some smoke over here. I know I can hear somebody moving around. Then again, who knows? Maybe War Thunder has messed up the sound balancing again and I'm just hearing random things. Oh. No! Oh, I only got one kill. I mean, hey, I don't lose that life, but I still don't gain anything. I'm gonna try something different with the Crusader here. Oh, I got a kill assist. All right. Uh, it was on that Tehran. Oh, that's that new uh, Hungarian tank with the uh, the big forehead. Ooh. Okay, I got a kill. That was uh, slightly scary. Knocked out my engine from the front, too. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Got to capture a point just to make sure our team doesn't lose. Oh, that Chaffee better watch out behind him. What's he shooting at? Oh! There you go, got another assist. Is that two assists? It's two assists and a kill, isn't it? So, I mean, that would be two kills for an upgrade, I think. See, I like how there's A and B points captured and there's somebody camping our spawn. I mean, it just, it just doesn't make sense. Honestly, there's enough planes out that I might actually be able to bring my AA out. Might be useful for that. Well, that's not good. That Sherman over there just died. Shooting at something down this way. Let's have an investigate. Whoa! My gunner's knocked out, so I can't exactly do anything. Yep. <laughs> it's annoying that he was right there the entire time. Right. Plane? 
Alright, there's that one. Come on, turn this way, turn this way. Oh, we're just a little bit too slow. I don't know if he's gonna come back down this way. This is a much bigger target, but the, I think these bullets are a little bit slower than, than they look. So, yeah, I might actually be, I don't know, aiming a little too, too short of that. But there's another plane coming, so we can try that again. You know, I definitely, definitely should have taken a plane instead of this. Don't get me wrong, the British SPAA line is probably not the strongest in the game. But they do have like one or two kind of interesting ones. But they're sort of the exception rather than the rule. And when you're starting off with something like this, it's a struggle. Especially if you're up tiering it this hard too. So if you're going to try this challenge for yourself, I definitely don't recommend doing exactly this. I'd, I'd say take the plane. In fact, if I'm going to do this again, I'd probably do that as well. All right, so kind of a bittersweet match there. I mean, the little Tetra's going down to to one life remaining. He might be our first crew to be eliminated. But our Crusader has got one upgrade. Now we're not counting the folders, so that means we're getting the Cromwell, which is definitely a big jump up. Well, it's, it's a big jump up in, in just about everything. The armor is a little thicker, the gun's a little stronger, it's a little faster. It's overall just a bit better of a tank. It does, however, I think lose the scouting ability because it's a medium and not a light tank, but it's okay. We'll make do with what we got. And that of course means, because I haven't taken it out yet, <laughs> I am gonna have to take the Churchill out next. I would very much like to get our lowest BR vehicles like the Sark and the Tetra up there, but frankly, just taking them out seems to be wasting spawn points now, but we'll try. We'll see what the next bat match brings. All right, here we go. So I have nothing against the Churchill design, but the Mark I definitely is the definition of exposed tracks. It just seems like something that would have been developed during World War I instead of during World War II. I know having said that somebody's typing in the comments right now that that's exactly what happened, which is, you know, understandable. What's interesting is we do actually have two guns here, so I don't just have AP and HE, I have them in two separate guns. How useful that's gonna be, I don't really know, but I mean, this is kind of a decent-ish HE. It's a three-inch gun. That turret, on the other hand, I don't think is the strongest, but we'll find out. Definitely not the strongest point of this vehicle, though, is mobility. Kind of topping out here at 20. Oh, hang on, no, 24, there we go. It's like it's trying to prove me wrong now that it's actually going a little faster. I don't know, why couldn't you have gone faster earlier? All right, just saw somebody over there. Don't have a clear shot on him. There we go. Okay, we got him. That's a uh, commander and gunner out. I really don't want to get flanked on the right here. Ooh, this could be bad. What are you doing? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, it's the same guy. Uh, I should have known he'd come back out. Actually, unbelievable. That is one life off of the uh, Churchill. I mean, even if it might get the assist for some of the damage it's done, um, it didn't happen during its lifetime, and that's kind of how I'm managing it. Not because it's correct, but because it's easier for me to keep track of. See, like that assist, I'm going to attribute to the Cromwell, just because it's easier for me to track. So you might find some moments where it seems like I've counted that wrong, but I do check it at the scoreboard afterwards to see if it's correct. Um, but if I forget to do that, then yeah, it's going to be slightly wrong. But hey, when you're keeping track of evolving lineups across multiple vehicles, it gets a little tricky. Probably why it's easier to do this with just one vehicle at a time. Oh, that is two assists. Let's see if we can get you... Oh. He died just as I hit him. Ooh. Okay, well that was slightly terrifying. I thought that plane was gonna bomb me. Of course, you've probably been wondering since the beginning why I'm only going up to rank 5, and the main reason is, if you think planes are bad at low BRs, wait till you get to helicopters and drones. Ooh, yeah, that's my bad. I wasn't paying attention and overextended. Oopsie. But that actually does put my uh, Cromwell crew down to their last life. That's not good. Definitely not good. Hello. Well, we got one kill, and apparently that kill didn't count. The scoring in this game is sometimes the most messed up thing. But yeah, I I guess even though the, the match had ended at exactly the same time, it didn't count it, so. You know, I genuinely wish that scouting was more effective. And that's not something that's an, that's an issue with the game, it's an issue with just teams. 
All right, we got those scouted. Did I scout the one that was down here? Okay, there's one there. And then there's one right here. And so far I've gotten, out of three scouts, one assist. All right, steady on. Not entirely sure what that was about. I'm gonna cross over here and see if I can scout whatever is shooting at the T-34. There's definitely something down there. I got hit. I took out his loader. Why is this loader sitting down? Back up. Oh wait, I got his gunner. I might be able to get a kill here. There we go. That's one kill and one assist. I need one more. Gotta try and finish this guy off. Come on. There we go. Two kills. Okay, somebody's coming to me now. I, I don't know if they know that I'm here. They might hear me. Well, he definitely knows I'm here now. And I'm dead. Let's see some wild lasted though. Two kills. I will take it. All right, Cromwell time. Oh, there's an assist. All right, let's see if I can get you. Oh, that was a ricochet. That was bad. It's turning. Nope, this is bad. Okay. I bounced that one. Oh, I just skipped it off his roof. All right, his gunner's out. Let's see if I can hit him again. Okay, don't hit the same spot. I'm gonna hit him right here. Oh, that's a head, sir. That's very bad for my health. Oh, I did get a kill, though. One kill, two assists. It counts. All right, Churchill time. I mean, I don't think we're gonna win this match, but at this point, I'm not really that concerned. Yeah, how is the Nebelwerfer still alive? And before somebody corrects me and says that, actually, that's not technically a Nebelwerfer. It's a rocket launcher that's similar, but it's on a half track. And to which I say, really? Because I didn't know that. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. He blew himself up. I will take it. I can hear something moving around, so maybe there is something here, though. No. Oh, really? Right into the path of that? That's got to be the most unlucky thing ever. Yep, I'm side on. <laughs> and of course, with that death, the Churchill is now down to its last life as well. But the Sark gets to upgrade to the six pounder version. I feel like these two should be foldered. Maybe. I don't know. They are basically the same vehicle. But that, of course, brings us up to 3.7 with the Sherman 2, the Sark six pounder and still a Churchill one. I'm feeling a little bit more confident with the Sherman though, although this one is basically stock. But we will eventually be able to get that M61 shot. You know, assuming I stay alive long enough, we might actually have that for the battle after. Also, weirdly, this one gets a T45 uh, APCR shot. I didn't know it got that. All right, here we go with the British Sherman. I tell you what is really good about this though, and it's not just that we have that 75 mil gun. It's that 50 caliber on the roof. 50 cal is surprisingly powerful against quite a number of things. Plus you can use it to break tracks, so it's always useful. Ooh, that T-34 just went over there and got smacked by something. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of enemies watching that way. I feel like going over there is not a good idea. Also, I don't want to expose my sides at all. What is that? Is that a KV? I can't quite tell. It looks like a KV. It is, it is a KV. Right, that's not something I really want to fight head on. Oh, get off. No, 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 go away. Yeah, remember what I said about the 50 cal? <laughs> I think I think he might have forgotten that that existed. <laughs> or he was looking at my big gun and not the little one. I mean, I say little one, 50 BMG is not exactly a small round at all. Uh-oh. Come on, get his gun. Get his gun. I don't know what I just hit. I Oh, I got his commander and gunner. Nice. Okay. That's exactly what I needed to do. Uh-oh. No, bombs. Really? I just had to come in and ruin my fun. Oh, I got 50 cal on top of this, too. But hey, you know what? It... It counts though, it's not a... I don't lose a life on that crew because they got at least one kill. They only lose that life if it's a no kill death or no assists or anything. Basically, if they don't achieve anything. <laughs> well, I should probably not go straight ahead. There you go, there's an assist. No, 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 no. You know what, we got an assist, I'm counting it. 
<laughs> Who knows, maybe I'll get a scouting assist against the KV-1 now. Or he might be about to kill that M10. I'm just looking at the map and waiting. Oh, something just went past. I want to keep the front towards this direction as much as possible, I think. That way we got both guns on target. All right, where did that little one go? Because I definitely saw something go down this way. It didn't look big, though. Unless maybe the SU-152 dealt with it. All right, I'm just going to reverse here. I, I think something's on the other side of that hill. Oh, uh, that bomb was aimed at me. Not very well, but it was aimed at me. I'm now just more concerned that I can hear whatever that is moving, and I still haven't seen it yet. It's like it's moving very, very slowly or something. What? Right. <laughs> That's the Churchill out of the game completely. Like, that crew is gone. It's a bit of a shame, too, because... Well, that could have actually brought us down a very interesting line. It's a little unfortunate, but that's just the way she goes sometimes. Oh, there's something right in front of me. Hello. Excuse me. Hello. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was not expecting that to be a kill. Uh... Oh. He was sitting there on the camp. To be honest, I thought the game was going to end before I even got there, so... It, it didn't seem like it was going to matter. But that unfortunately means the Churchill is out of here. And that leaves us with four crews remaining. Right, so we only have one life left on the little Tetra. And I'm thinking if I go around like really far out near the sea point, I might be able to get a sneaky kill. I mean, it depends. If my teammates keep shooting at me, it's not going to work. Now I need to get around here. Hopefully before... Or the game kills me. Come on. I'm hoping this this line of bushes here is inside the map. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that was very close. We had one second left. <laughs> but this is fine. I can hide out here. All right, I'm gonna drop artillery down here. See if I can get a sneaky shot on whoever's on the B point. I mean C point. Can't even quite see him. Oh, I guess that one's dead. But hey, maybe the artillery will get a hit on something. If anything's still alive. I doubt it, though, because the sea point's being captured. But it's okay, I can move a little closer. Wait, I hit something? Oh, maybe I hit a friendly. Uh, that's slightly less entertaining. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe there was somebody there. Okay, we don't want to go out too far. There's something. What is that? It's a Sherman. I don't think I can do anything to that. I'm going to shoot at it anyway. Oh, he shot at me. Ah! Yeah, that wasn't gonna go very well, was it? It's okay, I have a Sherman of my own. Although this one doesn't have the M61 shot. Which, if you've seen my previous videos, um, honestly, in sort of like the early and mid tiers, the M61 and M62 shots that the US have are like the best shots. Like, they just seem to be the most reliable at not just penning something, but also killing it. It's one of the reasons I love the, uh, the Chaffee so much, because it just, it has that same gun with that shell. Of course, the downside is the Sherman that I've brought doesn't have the M61 unlocked. And that is a bit of a downside. All right, I think if I cut across this way, a bit risky showing my sides here. Although then again, this is the Sherman with the cast hull, I think it is. Oh, there's something down there. But yeah, that armor isn't particularly strong anyway. Is that plane? It's a friendly plane. Is there an enemy plane? Oh, there is one. 50 cows, do your job. Well, never mind. We can't elevate the gun high enough. And I think I might have just drawn some attention to myself. Yeah, I can't get the uh, the 50 up high enough to be able to deal with that. Unless he comes down lower, which he is doing. Okay, I hit him. Ooh, I got a crit. Is he going to crash? Hey! <laughs> I am okay with that. <laughs> That's one kill. Wait, what is that? Big knock out his gunner. I just saw it at the last moment. I was like, what is that? It's an anti-air of some kind. Looks like a flak panzer, maybe? What hit the flak bus? Oh, it was a panzer over there. Well, I got an assist. Interesting, the scoreboard says I have two assists, though, and I don't know wh what happened with that. <laughs> 
But apparently I have two kill assists, so... Alright, let me just check this. Yes, one of the assists is on the Tetra, so I'm not gonna count it. But the last match has at least given us the M61. Not only is this shell an improvement over the stock AP round in terms of penetration, but it actually has explosive filler, meaning whatever you hit is most likely to die. Not all the time, but most of the time. And you combine that with the stabilizers that all of these US tanks seem to have is good. Look at that stabilizer. Look at that gun move up and down. Oop, there's a rock. It doesn't stabilize against rocks, but against everything else it seems to work pretty fine. I don't know why that T-34 was just running from him. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was happening there? Was he... Did he not know he was being chased? Alright, we got something else coming up here. Oh, I don't have a shot on him. He doesn't know I'm here though. Come back. Come back. Do you know I'm here? Oh, I think he knows now. Or maybe he doesn't. Okay, I don't know what I just hit on him. But it wasn't useful. <laughs> Is there something up on the ridge there? That's always the tricky part about being in this particular spot, is having to watch your back against that exact ridge there, because that's where people can hide. Alright, somebody's behind this rock over here. So I'm just gonna use the terrain a little bit to get down over here. He probably can hear me moving around, but he might not have seen me just yet. Oh, he did just take a hit though. Alright, I can peek out once, but I gotta watch that right side. It's a tricky spot, honestly down here because you got two different exits to worry about. Hello there. Come on 50 cals. There we go. Oh wow I did not see him at all. He was so well hidden down there. <laughs> and I mean that's three kills. Nearly four. I think if I'd seen that Stug earlier. Yeah because I could definitely hear multiple vehicles moving. I just thought he was closer to the spawn or at least from that valley rather than right below me. But what can you do? It's just amazing how much difference one shell makes. I, I know that, that wouldn't have affected the last battle but I'm gonna go with that excuse. Alright so this gun has a shell with even more pen on it but it doesn't have explosive so it might have a slight issue with damage but at least I have the scout ability now. Oh, somebody's behind that rock. Oh, there he is. Well, I didn't manage to scout him. I'm very sure this is a bot because it is just moving around like that. But he is doing a very good job of baiting the enemy to shoot at him, which I like. All right, there's his gunner, loader, commander, his whole turret crew. I just need one more hit. Just one more. Come on. There we go. He knows how to repair, which is interesting. So either he's a bot or he's a complete new player who doesn't know how to use the controls. Either way, I'm going to help repair him. But this is also why the tutorial exists in the game. But quite how somebody would be in, you know, in a T-34 and not know how to play. It's a little questionable. All right, so we got no assist that round and I got three with the Sherman. Only one with the Sark, though. And that, of course, has the odd downside of... Well, it's an upside and downside because I get to upgrade to the Sherman Firefly, which is objectively a better tank. But it brings us to 4.7 with nothing else upgraded. I was kind of hoping we would cross ranks all at the same time and that just hasn't happened. And of course, we're now down to three crews remaining. Weirdly enough, the one that has survived with the most lives is the Sark. As much as I did really well that last round with the Sherman 2, we only have one life left with this, so if we get a no-kill death next round, this one's out, and that's a, but that does also drop us down a BR. There's, there's all sorts of variables going on here, and it's just what makes this challenge really, really weird to play, but actually kind of fun. And if you've been watching this far, and you want to try this challenge out for yourself, let me know down in the comments how you would do it, what your platoon would look like. Give me a list! All right, here we are. The Sherman Firefly on Campania. That long 17-pounder gun is good. And this vehicle is completely spaded as well. So it's as good as it's going to be. This just isn't the sort of map that I would normally use this on. Or maybe not this version of the map, because the area that I like to use is all the way up here, and we've started down here. So it's not good for me. In fact, I'm slightly considering going down that way now because that just seems like a better idea. The Firefly, of course, is based on a later variant of the Sherman, 
which has a different type of hull, meaning it has the effect of having stronger armor. But this is still not a tank I would like to go brawling with because it only has solid shot AP, meaning even if you can shoot through quite a lot of tanks, and I really do mean at this VR, you can shoot through almost everything, almost, if you place it right. You're still gonna need more than one shot to kill most things normally. And also because I forgot to bring any HE at all, open top vehicles are gonna be especially interesting to shoot at. <laughs> But that's what we have this 50 cal on the roof for. Just like the uh, Hellcat and the Wolverine, if you encounter an open top and you don't have explosives, usually that open top vehicle can't stand up to 50 cal anyway. So you're usually okay if you do that. Don't take my word for it, your mileage may vary. All right, dead tank over there, friendly tank over there, meaning enemies over there. Yep, something just died over there. <laughs> so I was almost right. Uh, I, I just don't see anybody going the long way, though. The long way being down, like, past those houses there. Oh, there we go. There's one. That's a chaffy. Where's he going? Where are you going? I'm gonna set range for... Yeah, 600 should be fine. Question is, which way is he going? Oh, that, the other one's still going, too. Oh, that landed short. That was short as well. All right, back up, back up, back up, back up. All right, that one's down. That's got to be a thousand meters, surely. Right? Yeah, roughly. <laughs> it's greater than 868, so a thousand meters. All right, let's set that back to 650 and fire. Okay, well, commander and loader out. He knows where I am, though. I'm going to say that's 1100. There we go. <laughs> There is something right next to me. Absolutely, 100% there's something right next to me. I'm, I'm a bit concerned that I may have to fight something off in a moment here. There we go, that's destroyed. All right, where's that Sherman that was shooting at me? All right, I need to deal with some close quarters stuff because if I go around this rock, I'm gonna expose myself to everything that's down there. There's a lot of enemies going down that way. All right, let's just have a quick look through here. Anybody here? It's a heavy tank that's spotted down here. I don't think I can fit through here, but I might be able to get a shot. Okay, he has no idea that I'm down here. Come on, let me get that turret cheek. Too high. <laughs> and now he knows. Oh, KV. KV. Alright. He can't damage me. Drop artillery. Get back. Smoke. Oh, the smoke is so far away. Oh, the artillery had the intended effect. There we go. That that shot was a little low and a little random, but it's okay. It did its job. Keep backing up. We gotta keep backing up. It's only against those really heavy tanks where you can see the solid shot AP actually have the desired effect, but it really needs explosive filler to make it work. Like really kind of give it that final, final blow. I think it's the way to really say that. You want to be careful about exposing the sides with the Sherman because it has the same sort of weak point as a Tiger. I know it's weird comparing them, but because they have the ammo racks on the sides when it's fully loaded, uh, they are very vulnerable to ammo explosions that way. It can be a big problem. Plus, obviously the side is weaker than the front, so it's not going to work well for you anyway. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting to have to two-shot a Chaffee. That definitely is uh, a unique situation. Something's coming up behind me. Turn around. Get into cover. This is an intense game. I thought I'd be sniping all game, honestly, because that's what the Firefly is best at. But um, we're doing close quarters now, and it's apparently working. All right, I'm going to drop artillery on this spot right here. I mean, I might be about to get bombed any second, though. If I'm honest. It's huh? a KV. Does he know where I am? I don't think so. But this is stopping him for the time being. He's, he is backing up. I don't think he knows exactly where I am, so... Hello! How did that not pen? That didn't pen either. Quick, rotate the hull. <laughs> 
Yeah, that went straight through my side. But five kills, though. All right, there's enough aircraft in the air that I might be able to do something with this little guy. Come on. Are you coming straight at me? Let me have it. I need the... Just give me a hit at least. Run away. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't think I was going to go anywhere. Okay, apparently I got a kill assist for that. I'll take it. Come on. It's honestly probably a waste to actually spawn at this point. But you know what? I'm doing some damage. I might as well. Hey, I got two assists. <laughs> yeah, they were scouting assists, but I will take it. So this is interesting. Those two kills were... Well, I got one assi kill assist with the Sark, but I got two assists with the Sherman, which we know two assists counts as a kill, and five with the Firefly. So that actually is a total of six. Which means the Firefly is getting upgraded three times. We're going past the Comet, or the Challenger, to the Centurion Mark I, to the Mark III in one game. It also means that our six-pounder Sark is now going to be brought up to 7.7. .7. And of course our little light AA gun over here, which has done absolutely nothing this entire time in this challenge, is now down to its last life. So the question is, with both our strongest and our weakest crew being down at one life each, this could very well lead to us completing the challenge with just two kills to go and unlocking the Kanavan, or it could very well set me down to 3.3 with three lives remaining. At this point, anything could happen. Right, Centurion Mark III. Probably the shape that you most think of when you think of Centurion. And of course, this version has the big 20 pounder gun on it, which fires these nice little APDS rounds, like so. Fun fact, when I was a kid, I had these uh, plastic little green army men. I think a lot of kids had those growing up. My set came with a tank and it was actually a centurion. So for the longest time, whenever I think of a tank, I used to just think of a centurion. But it is one of those really ubiquitous tanks that was used in so many different countries, uh, including Australia. Oh, hello. Okay, he's not looking at me. Right, his uh, commander and loader is out, but not his gunner. Uh, unfortunately, he is... Oh, no, he's not back in cover yet. Okay, now he is. <laughs> I had a chance. I had a chance. And I don't have artillery unlocked on this, so I can't make use of that. It's a little bit of a shame, but it's okay. He'll definitely have a long repair with that turret drive being knocked out too. There we go. It's a M41, I think. That one. Oh, hello. Are you gonna look at me? No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will take it. Okay, that looks like a Pershing. Okay, never mind. It's a T29 and he saw me first. But did we do it? We did. That is two kills. It actually did it. And of course, this is where we would have ended up in the Carnarvon. Much the same looking, at least, as a Centurion. Because it does actually share the same turret, as far as I know. But the hull is very, very different. Not that you can really tell at first glance, but you know, looking at them side by side, you can kind of see the difference. But that is a challenge completed. So, as much as I would have loved to see uh, another crew reach rank five, it would definitely have been a struggle given that we were gonna be constantly up tiered. And that's just sort of the downside of a challenge like this. You want every single vehicle to kind of match all of them, but it does go to show that not every single reserve vehicle is made equal. In fact, almost none of them are. And of course the same can be said for vehicles of every single rank, even if they're the same BR, they may not really work out the same way. And that is where I'm going to leave it there. So of course, let me know what your preferred lineups would be if you were to take on this challenge by yourselves down in the comments below. And would you take SPAA or a plane? Because if I was to do this over, I would have definitely gone with the plane. And maybe I would have included some of the premiums I have in there as well if I was doing it that way. But of course, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. And of course, subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. I have loads of War Thunder content as well as plenty of playlists of so many other games, especially tank games. So if you're a fan of that, this is the place to be. My name is Panzer. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.